Hello folks, so I want to tell you what I am trying to do. I'm trying to get a good angle for the Speedy B Mario Ford 8. Uh, it is just a little too big for my walking station. But uh, I think there's a couple of things I can do that may make it a little easier. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use this little wrench that actually come with the frame uh, to take those big old 8 inch props out all right now that we have the props out it's a little more manageable but definitely still a little too big for my little walking station so what we're gonna be doing next is we're gonna take this screw out we got one two three four and after that i'm pretty sure we'll be good to go all right screws are out and this is what you can do with the mario fold can fold those harm to where it is a little more manageable for my walking station so thank you for watching this video guys i hope that we're gonna enjoy it today we're gonna be talking about the speedy b mario fold 8 dc So, in case you didn't know, this is the Speedy B Mario 8 for DC. And this is Speedy B, otherwise, run can entry into the big long range drone. And if you're someone who is thinking about getting a 7 inch drone, I will say kind of uh, think about this drone uh, because it is a very, very nice drone. Now, it's not a 7 inch, it is a 8 inch. But since it is a 8 inch platform, that means you can use a 7.5 or a 7 inch pop if you want to. It is up to you. You don't have to use a 8 inch pops. Now, uh, this is my custom build, but you can also uh, buy this drone from Speedy B. Actually, you cannot buy it from Speedy B. I don't think Speedy B is selling them for some reason. But they are available on AliExpress as a band and fly. As a band and fly, if my memory is serving well, the price is about seven. Now the price is about six hundred fifty dollar, and the band and fly does come with the DJI O3 Air unit. You can also buy it as a plug and play. Uh, that means you're gonna get the drone, uh, but without the VTX and without a receiver and that version is about 350 dollars so that is really is kind of a steal uh, based on our uh, the competitor to this drone which would be the camera 7 and the gap rc i think those uh, goes for a little more expensive than the speedy b mario ford 8 dc uh, if you watch my channel you know i love to build drones so i got the frame and by the way i already posted a video about this frame you can look it up and how to put the frame together it is not a very difficult frame to put together but it's a it's a little more involved than your regular seven inch frame and this frame i got it from uh, aliexpress uh, the vendor i got it from i was selling it for 99 dollars and i've seen them goes as high as 129 so if you decide to get it from aliexpress uh, just do a little bit of shopping don't pay 129 for it uh, you should be able to get it for less than a hundred bucks or almost a hundred dollar for the frame and for a hundred bucks uh, This is a very nice frame as I showed you earlier. It actually does come with a ratchet wrench and You get a five millimeter socket head for your motor nuts and you also get this M10 socket head and the M10 is for those big M10 screws and that's really what holding the harm together on this frame. So it, there is only one screw holding the harm together, the big M10. So if you end up breaking the harm, you can actually swap the harm pretty easily. And talking about the arms, those harm are seven millimeter thick. Uh, the frame itself has three plates. You got the top plate, which is 2.5 millimeter thick. You got the sandwich plate, which is 2.5. And you got the bottom plate, which is also which is actually three millimeter thick. The frame itself is actually pretty slim. The space you got between the top and sandwich place, it's about 22 
millimeter so really don't have too much height as far as your electronic goes width wise you have enough or area for your electronics in the back you have a 30 by 30 months 25 by 25 months and 20 by 20 months uh, this frame will take the freestyle vtx from hd0 it will take a work snail analog because you got 25 by 25 and 20 by 20 and it will take a vista or any other analog vtx you like to use and of course it does take the dji o2 air unit in the middle you got 20 by 20 and 30 by 30 months so in my case i'm using a 30 by 30 stack but if you're crazy enough and you want to use a 20 by 20 stack that also will work and in the front you have 20 by 20 and 25 by 25 so as far as mounting your electronic you have the option of playing around how you want to mount them all those yellow pieces are uh, 3d printed pieces uh, at our cpu uh, very high quality pieces and uh, they come in a frame so you do have your little arm skid or motor protector skid i don't know how you call this landing skid yeah let, let you go with landing skid you have the gps mount in the back uh, you do have the gopro adapter in the front and you also have your little tpu pieces uh, for your camera uh, talking about those tpu pieces uh, they are very interesting uh, because uh, speedy b was very clever on making them uh, they do take both the O3 air unit camera and any other size of camera you have and the way it works why not i got my nebula camera on it if you look on the little mount there is a little more i would say how can i say that you can see that the mount is pretty much a little more thicker and if you're planning on using a much larger camera the only thing you have to do is swap them around in one position uh, it allows you to use a o3 air unit in another position it allows you to use a 19 by 19 camera uh, looking on a gopro adapter that is also a very nice design because the adapter on most frame kind of sit on top of the frame uh, what speedy did is that they incorporate the adapter within the frame so that is very nice and if you want to see how uh, it's actually mounted i will ask you to go and check the video i uh, put about assembling this frame together the front design for this frame it's very interesting uh, everything is made of aluminium and it is kind of a little bit intricate how you put them together but the end result is that you have a very rigid front of the frame i don't know how much protection you will get as far as your camera goes because if you look on my nebula i will see my lens is a little bit out so that may be something you have to take into consideration especially if you're using a o3 air unit on this guy my advice is gonna be to use like a lens protector to protect the lens on the o3 air unit but uh this is a nebula if the lens go out i can always swap it that's one of the good things about the nebula so let me cover the frame quality itself it is a pretty good quality frame uh, the carbon they use according to speedy website is a 700 carbon i'm not a carbon specialist but over the year i have built multiple drones and i say that this is a pretty good quality carbon just based on my experience uh everything on this frame is chamfer uh, there is no sharp edges or rough edges everything is very smooth to the touch they do have those little cutouts uh, for your battery strap uh, the battery strap that come with this frame is of pretty high quality uh, you get two of them and i think they are about 300 uh, centimeter so they should be able to pretty much accommodate any kind of battery you use on this guy as far as battery goes you can pretty much put in any size battery you want to so now that i'm done with the frame let me go over what i use on this build uh first of all let's go with the props uh those are the props i'm using as far as eight inch pop goes there is really not that many options uh on top of my head uh the only people I can think that make eight inch pops it's hq gem fan and there's another company that make eight inch pop i cannot think of those are the hq pop durable they are eight by 3.7 by three so it is a trial blade i've seen there is also a bar blade version of this pop i may have to give it a try as far as model the model i'm using on this build are the avenger 
from bottle obese and those are 30 or 8 so pretty big motor i would say you can get away with a 28 or 7 uh, that actually the motor size that come in the bundle fly from speedy b but i went with the 30 or 8 i think they should be giving me a little more extra torque to spin those big props uh, this is a 1150 kv and i want to try to play around with it a little bit i may see if i may get away by going down to a thousand kv uh, so far the flat time is actually pretty good as far as the stack goes i'm using one of my old stack i actually took this stack out of my iFlight uh, xl8 and the stack is the olibo kakute f7 uh, it does come with a big esc this is a 65 amp esc and that is a little bit overkilled for this drone uh, you should be able to get away with 50 amp if you want to but i just went with the stack i already have in hand so that kind of save you some money flag controller is the f7 work fan the one thing i have to say is that i don't really like to work with kakute flag controller because they use those two holes uh, kind of make it hard to uh, solder anything on it but that's just a flag controller nothing special about it and of course for the ptx i'm using the cadex vista nebula a lot of people have been going away from the vista in my opinion the vista is still a pretty pretty good ptx uh, range wise is to me it's same as a o3 air unit uh, very small size wise the only drawback is that you do not have recording on the vtx that's not a problem that's what we have gopros for and as far as the uh, gps module this is the gps module i'm using uh, is the one for foxy i think is a m10 to 50 uh, does have a magnetometer and i have my magnetometer set up even though i'm running beta flight and in case you're wondering that is actually the perfect size for the gps mounts that come on the frame so if you're wondering what size of gps gonna fit on the gps mount uh, the foxy m10 250 is the perfect size i didn't have to use any double side tape or zip tie it's just in there stay in there and it's not coming out so it's a perfect fit the antenna i'm using is the lollipop 4 I had to play a little bit with the antenna uh, because the wire from the antenna was actually a little too short to get to the VTX. So what I ended up doing, I ended up cutting the tubing on the antenna to make it to where I can actually reach the VTX. More likely what I'm going to have to do, I may end up uh, going for a different antenna, but as far as performance goes, the Lollipop work pretty good. Uh, the receiver I'm using is the Radio Master RP3. It is a duo receiver and I have the antenna as you can see. I kind of roughly mounted them on the frame. I'm going to have to design some 3D printed parts so I can set them up. But for right now, uh, this is just the way I have them mounted. And it's working pretty good. I took it out for a spin already and I didn't see anything abnormal or any issues the way I have them mounted. And the one thing I don't like about it is that the xc60 coming out from the front if you've seen any of my other video uh, on my build i like to have my xc60 coming out on the side but that's actually not a big issue now the frame does come with those two side plates uh, they're supposed to go on the side i'm not gonna be using those because they're kind of pain in the butt uh, they go in pretty easily but to get them out is kind of hard and i will show you on this side I got a little bit of tape around this wire because I was trying to get them up and I end up nicking one of my wire from my motors. So I'm not really using them. Now, if I had a flat controller that had a Bluetooth, I just put them, put them in and keep them in place. And if I need to make any kind of change on the flat controller, I just use the Bluetooth. But the Kakute F7 does not have a bluetooth on it so i'm not gonna be using those it's kind of annoying to take them on and off all the time yeah, so i think that's pretty much it as far as this build i'm gonna be posting uh, some more video about it and i'm gonna be doing some testing on this guy but as far as flying goes uh, does fly pretty good i'm using beta flight 4.4.3 on it if you got any question guys just put it in the comment section i do my best to answer them but overall it is a pretty good build and I will see you guys on the next video. Thank you again for watching.